Let's take a look at some of the different flexibility when using the render in place in Cubase. Oftentimes when people need to render edits together or virtual instruments with effects or audio tracks with effects, we could do this very easily using the render in place. Sometimes people will go to the edit menu and select render in place and realize that perhaps nothing, uh, it's not visible because the currently selected track or event has nothing that could be rendered. So be very aware that when you render in place, it could either work on an event or a track depending on what is selected. So right now, let's say I've done extensive edits in these two events and I wanted to render them as separate events. We could go to, again, our edit menu to render in place and let's go to our render settings and we'll choose to render these as separate events. All right, now we notice that as we did this, that the original events turned white. And what the white indicates is that when we had our source track settings, we chose to actually mute the source tracks. So when it turns white, it's muted so that it doesn't play back two different times. So each event is now rendered as separate events. If we wanted to take a different approach and render in place where we join these two events into one contiguous event, we could just choose one event. And again, we'll see that these are going to be muted. Now, working with virtual instruments, we also have a lot of flexibility with this. So we'll go to our render in place settings. And let's say in this particular track, I want it to just have dry and transfer channel settings. So in this track, I have just a pad sound that's being routed to a FX modulator. So I'm going to turn this off. So we have this as an insert effect. And let's say I have my channel EQ or channel strip plugins. So when I go to my render in place, I'm going to do select dry and it says transfer channel settings. So let's go ahead and render. So as soon as we've selected that, we notice that the event color has carried over. And when we go to listen to it, it's going to sound exactly the same. But what it did was it copied over all of the channel settings, such as again, channel strips, EQs, inserts, and it's copied it over to this particular rendered track. So if I wanted to bypass the effects, so again, the, the processing and effects and EQs were just transferred over and not embedded into the particular audio file. If we wanted to embed those particular channel settings, such as the EQs, inserts, channel strip, we could just click on channel settings. And now as we render, we'll notice that the processing will be kind of baked into the particular file. So as we play this, we don't see any of the processing, but as we solo, all the effects are now embedded and rendered into the file. If we wanted to include different effects such as send effects, we could do this as well. So I'll select a couple of, we'll take my bass drum here, the kick. And let's say I have this kick going out to a delay. So we have our original kick and it's being processed out to a delay plugin. So I have these two events. Let's say I have these two events selected and I want to render. So I will choose complete signal path. So this will now include our send effects. But as we work with send effects that are beyond the borders of the particular event, we could add a tail. So I'm gonna set my tail to be bars and beats and let's just make it um, three beats long here. So I have these two events selected here. And now when I render, we could see that the delay, which was a dotted quarter note later, was automatically rendered with the particular file. 
if we had uh, processing on the master bus, such as a flanger, so let's say we added a flanger on the entire mix, and I wanted to take those two effects, we could also include those two events, let's take the complete signal path, which would include the channel settings, the EQs, inserts, uh, and channel strip, the sends, plus the master effects, and we'll render. And as we do this, these two files would include the flanging from the master. So as we want to work with this, sometimes we may also get into different scenarios where we want to have more flexibility with routing. So one of the things that was added recently in Cubase 12 was the ability to take side chaining into effect. So let's say I have a compressor on my base. I'll just bypass my flanger here. So we'll go to the base and we go to the compressor and we want to activate side chaining and I'll just send the kick as a side chain. So as the uh, as the kick drum comes in, the bass is going to duck down. So at this point, if I wanted to render the bass part, all I would have to do is do a render in place, and I'll just choose my channel settings. And at this point, we're going to just render. And as we do this, the side chaining will automatically take effect. So we could actually see the, the amplitude of the waveform of the bass. So that's everywhere that the kick was coming in as well. So very flexible for different signal flow routings. Now, one of the best things with render in place is we could do this for multiple events or multiple tracks simultaneously. So if I want it to come directly here and select my pad sound and the bass, and I have both of the tracks selected. Now we get some additional options when tracks are selected versus events. So one of them would be that we could just select the particular events here. I'm going to select the tracks and on our source track settings, we get two additional options. One is to disable the source tracks, and that would basically allow you to unload the virtual instruments, freeing up processing and perhaps memory. Or you could choose to remove the source tracks. So I'm gonna come and we'll say disable the source tracks. So we'll go ahead and render in place. So we'll see our our pad sound that's been rendered again with the effects and our instrument sound. And these two tracks have been disabled, unloaded from taking computer processing power. Now, if I wanted to do the same thing, but like just hide the source tracks, I could just click on hide the source track. So it will unload those, render it, unload, and then it's hidden the particular tracks just that easily. Now, many times when we're working with virtual instruments, we may have multiple outputs. So let's say if I want to take my groove agent track here, which has multiple outputs that have been configured in the instrument where the kick, snare, the triangle, bongos are all going out of different outputs. So these aren't on separate tracks, but in the instrument themselves, they're being routed externally. So I want to take this particular track and let's go to our render in place. And I'm going to choose the channel settings. And once we do this, we could now at this point just say, okay, let's render. And as we render, it's going to take the channel outputs in each of the particular uh, files here will automatically be rendered by their output so that I could have just the kick on its own, just the snare or, you know, my 
triangle or different bongos all separated. So I didn't have to do any extensive routing or anything like that. And if we wanted to do, undo that, all of those options are available. So if I wanted to take a number of different tracks at this point and kind of mix them down together. So uh, we could do this very quickly inside of the render in place. So let's say I'm gonna select my pad, my bass, my loop, my kick, and all of my different sources. We'll open up our render in place dialog. I'm gonna choose, um, we want to make sure that we have the channel settings. And at this point we could just mix down to one uh, one audio file and we could give it a custom name. So we're basically doing a submix of everything together. And we want to, let's say at the, at the end, remove the source tracks. So we could do that. So I'll just say render. And it's going to take all of our different sources together with all of the flexibility, uh, different routing options if you want it and mix it together into one file. So if I want to take like all my drums and do a submix, all my strings and do a submix, and now everything has been mixed directly down to one particular file. And I could choose to remove files. I could choose to hide the files. We could choose to disable, to mute, keep the original source files. So you could see that with the different flexibility of rendering place and being able to take multiple events, multiple tracks with different levels of processing with different signal flow options, it is an incredibly powerful tool inside of Cubase. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel.